care about current affairs, it's on the old show. And when you want to get clear what's going on here, it's on the old show. If you like to stay in the know, tune yourself into the old show, it's the old show. Laura Welcome to the Osho Canada's Current Affairs Show with Strong Opinions. I'm your host, Laura Babcock, and it's Marit. At least that's the ad <laughs> campaign that Marit Stiles, the leader of the official opposition, has put out across the province. And the last time we had Marit on the Osho, she's been on a few times, I challenged her a little bit about the messaging that was going to come out of the provincial NDP and whether or not it would be tough enough to take on Ford. And then in the middle of the night last week, I swear I heard a commercial about a premier that sounded rather lovely, almost utopic. And I thought, huh, a premier who cares about me as much as I care about my neighbors? What is that, Ontario? I was like, hmm, a premier who inspires me instead of enrages me daily with all <laughs> the scandals? Who could that be? And then the ad, of course, answers with its Marit. So as soon as I heard the ad, I tweeted out about it and invited Marit Stiles, leader of the official opposition, back on the O Show. Welcome back, Marit. Oh, it's great to be here. Now, tell me why your team at the NDP decided that the way to go with this rumblings of an early election coming in the province of Ontario was instead of going hard at Ford, there's plenty of attack lines, and I'm sure we'll get to them. Um, why did you decide as a team to say, you know what, we're not even going to mention the NDP brand in the ad. We're just going to have it all about Marit. Why did the NDP decide strategically better to focus on you and your personality rather than Ford or the record of the NDP? Well, I mean, first of all, you know, we 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 will continue to focus on Ford, and especially when the legislature is coming back, you'll you'll see us, of course, asking uh, the government all those tough questions and holding them to account on uh, all of the things that have happened over certainly the last few months as Doug Ford's been on this extended uh, break, but. Um, no question. You know, I'm a new leader. I've only been leader for about a year and a half. And so people need to get to know me. And we know that. And uh, so that's why we're focusing some of those ads right now on on who I am and what I believe in. And, and, um, and I do think uh, there's a contrast uh, between me and Doug Ford without question, right? And one of the things that I'm seeing, and certainly over the last year and a half, I've talked to many people and listened to so many Ontarians. And I, I really get the sense that uh, people are, are stuck, they're struggling, they want to build a good life, but things are not great right now, as we know, and um, people want to do more than just get by, right? They actually want to plan ahead and, 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 and build more for themselves. And I think people deserve a government and a premier that works as hard as they do. And that they're not getting that from Doug Ford and his government. So no question, I'm I'm out there, you know, trying to share a little bit about who I am, uh, what I'm about, uh, and because I, I'm going to be leading uh, the NDP into the next election, and uh, we are we are in it to win uh, and to form government here in Ontario. So when do you think the next election is going to be? Let's just use that as a place that, so we can sort of set the table here for our listeners and our viewers. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I absolutely think the government uh, has been getting ready for the election kind of since day one, uh, but that they are thinking about holding an early election. They, they've been pretty clear about that. Yeah. So for those watching, the election in Ontario isn't supposed to happen until June 2026. So uh, the premier could could call that election, however, any time. It could be this fall. Uh, it could be the spring. Um, one thing I know is that Doug Ford wants to go early. He wants to try to steal a couple more years uh, out of the people of Ontario, and we're not uh, going to let him do that. Um, look, uh, as far as I'm concerned, as I said, it, when people are forced to look at the record of this government, they're going to be saying to themselves, is my life any easier than it was six years ago? Has Have things gotten better? And what I hear over and over again is that people are feeling stuck. They're stuck looking for housing, stuck waiting for health care, and stuck paying the bill for all of Doug Ford's schemes and all of his scandals. And I think they know it's time for better. And so I think they're going to be very um, interested in what we have to offer them. And, uh, and we're going to be ready whenever he calls that election. 
Okay, well, let me just dial down on something that you said. You said steal another couple of years. How does one steal years in a democracy, Merit? What do you mean by that language? It's pretty well, strong. Well, we, we now have these set election dates in Ontario. And I think there's a general understanding that if you have a majority government, you can pretty much pass the legislation you want to. And they've certainly you know, also changed some of the rules to make it even easier for them to ram through legislation uh, in record time. So they don't need to go to the polls and force another election before June 2026. They have no reason to do that, except that they want to, uh, I think they, they know that people are struggling and they think they're hoping that they can get another extra few years out of, uh, out of power uh, to do what they want want to in the province of Ontario. And I mean, I, I do think of it as sort of stealing an election because, look, I mean, the people of Ontario will decide. They will vote and they will decide what they want uh, in this province. But Doug Ford and his government and his politicians, uh, you know, they've got a lot of schemes and a lot of scandals underway right now. They're under uh, criminal investigation by the RCMP. I think that they're feeling the pressure and they want to try to hold the election before the results of that investigation are concluded, uh, before people in Ontario have a chance to see, for example, um, the results of the next federal election. So I, I do think they kind of want to steal a few more years here. They know what's coming and they know that people are struggling and it's only going to get worse under their government. OK, and there's so uh, I take it that you were just using that word uh, rather colorfully because I'm a big proponent of free and fair democracies and don't want anyone yeah. to think that, you know, our elections are being stolen. We've got to prevent oh, yeah. that from happening. But yeah. that's not a concern in this case that we know of. So when it comes to trying to maybe game it for a couple more years of power, uh, I hear you saying, yes, what's happening federally matters with a conservative government provincially and a conservative government federally, that might not work out well for one of the other uh, as we look at traditional voting in Ontario and in Canada. Right. So there's political calculations there probably, but the RCMP, I mean, finally merit. I've had you on here twice, I think, since the investigation was even launched. Yeah. Uh, it's taken a year for us to see reporting on what's going on. And I know our, our viewers care deeply about this. We did one clip about this with uh, former Premier Kathleen Wynne, and it's had over 300,000 views. I mean, Ontarians care about this RCMP investigation and, the, and what happened with the Greenbelt scandal. It really penetrates through the noise. And so what did you learn from that reporting on it? Do you have anything else to add for our audience in terms of what we can expect? Uh, or, you know, because uh, I don't want to put all my my hopes in one basket here that we're going no, to have accountability. Absolutely. And, you know, we've, we've in, you know, I, I'm very proud of the the role we played in, um, in I think, sh shining some light on what the government was doing to the Green Belt, and and um, certainly what I think were was a scheme uh, uh, to ensure that some people who are close to the premier uh, would profit from those decisions at, at the expense of really important farmland that uh, we need in this province. And so I, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see the RCMP is actually getting that investigation underway. Uh, I share your concerns. It seems to be taking a long time, but we do know that as you saw in the report there, there are uh, interviews taking place. And, uh, but, you know, I think what's frustrating for a lot of people that I talk to is that the, the Doug Ford government, they seem to think that they can, they can, while this investigation's underway, people are, have moved on. And so they're just moving on. And so they've done things like bringing uh, the former minister of housing, who was, whose office was mired deeply in this controversy. He's back, you know, he's back in a big way. <laughs> he's gotten two promotions in the last few months. He's now the house leader. He's got a, he's, he's been given a, a parliamentary assistantship. Like, you know, it, he's out of the penalty box before we even know uh, the results of that investigation. So I, I think it's on us as the official opposition to continue to shine a light on uh, that land grab and why uh, it took place. And we will for sure be continuing to raise issues around that. I mean, we don't yet know everything that we need to know about the Greenbelt deal. Um, for example, we still don't have the premier's phone records. He refuses to share them. And they really should be a matter of public record because clearly he's conducting government business on his phone. Um, and, and the reason it matters as well is that we're continuing to see the government 
um, wrapped up in other scandals and schemes, which seem to share a lot of similarities with what happened with the Greenbelt. Um, I'm thinking, for example, of the expropriation of farmland in Wilmot, Ontario, which, you know, I've been there. I've, we had uh, people show up for a, a town hall that I've just never seen so many people show up for a town hall in rural Ontario to talk about that issue, to, to express their, their concerns. Uh, and of course, Ontario Place, uh, the scandal of this 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 almost hundred year lease uh, with Therma, with this luxury spa company. There's many other issues that I think share a lot of similarities with the kind of deal that the government made with the Greenbelt. And so, I think this will continue to be certainly an issue that requires a lot of scrutiny. And we're not going to let them off the we're not going to let them off. Yeah, I mean, if you kind of try to chunk it out into buckets, because I, I see the co- same names coming through, same themes coming through in terms of <clears throat> priorities and policies, we have an attack on the environment, the green belt. And, and then we saw this horrific cutting down of the ecosystem at Ontario Place under mm. the cover of darkness recently. Who, who takes down an urban forest in the oh, middle of the night? I, I mean, 2024. It's so counterintuitive when we're watching ma- major flooding in Toronto that never happened before. So, I mean, that's one bucket is the environmental degradation and callous disregard by this premier, by Premier Ford. But mm-hmm. what we also see in that mix is a level of secrecy. Uh, times where we can't hold to account what's happening in that office. Secret 95-year lease with the Therm deal. Yeah. What I find so egregious is the suffering of the people in Ontario while this stuff is happening. The yeah. suffering of autism families, the suffering of people who can't afford rent anymore, who are homeless. Uh, you have families that can't get long-term care that's safe and affordable for their seniors. Yeah. Uh, they also don't seem to care, Merit, about the people of Ontario. Yeah, I, I really, I mean, I obviously agree with you a lot going on, right? I mean, we've talked about a lot of issues, but um, without question, right, this obsession with these deals that, as you said, I mean, we know that, you know, you, people care about lots of elements of this, I will say. Like, I think if um, there's there's many elements, you know, what happened to the Green Belt and the reason I think that people were so remain so concerned about what the government was planning and their schemes and scandals around this is because, you know, first of all, important environmental piece, um, carbon sink, et cetera, but also uh, this is, this is agricultural land. So, you know, this is how we feed ourselves Uh, and agriculture is a very, very important industry as well in Ontario. So all of these pieces uh, are many reasons to be concerned about it, but I agree with you. I mean, I think what we see, especially with the Ontario place deal and now Doug Ford's, you know, tunnel to nowhere or fantasy tunnel or whatever you want to call it. I mean, I care about congestion as well. I mean, I, I want people to get home to their families, but this is, uh, you know, yet another deal, another scheme, another scandal that just doesn't seem to be um, coming from the experts. Uh, nobody's asking for uh, the Therma Spa. I didn't see a big uh, push for a luxury Austrian spa on the waterfront in Toronto. Um, so it really causes you to think, like, this is what they're obsessed with. This is what they're wasting your taxpayer dollars on um, instead of investing it and actually paying attention to the things where that are really impacting so many people in Ontario. Uh, you've spoken a lot about um, the impact of, of homelessness. I mean, the encampments that we're seeing. Um, my goodness, people losing their, their homes or on the brink of losing their homes, uh, whether they rent or they own, um, the degradation of our public health care system, right? The, the crazy weights that people have in emergency rooms, the fact that almost 3 million Ontarians don't have a family doctor. Um, and, and, and I think this is one that I, I when you talk about the green belt, when you talk about uh, Wilmot, any of these things, you know, the government said they were taking over that land in the green belt to build homes. Housing uh, is absolutely a concern for Ontarians. We need affordable housing. And that was never, ever about building affordable homes for Ontarians. And I think, you know, again, when when people see uh, the government putting so much money and so much time and so much effort into these schemes that really don't solve the everyday struggles that we have in our families, then they know, I I think Ontarians know that this is not a government that's working for them. So why not push 
that narrative because you know what I, I get what you're saying and there is a list of bad things and i mean bad policies and yeah. scandals that ford has done that is pages and pages oh, long i mean i tried to put it into three buckets but i could add other buckets yes I mean, absolutely there's, there's so much there's a laundry list of yes. things that have either been callous or silly or stupid or look corrupt or damaging or heartless or cruel, punching down on the poor, saying to they should get off their asses, telling teachers they should quit their knitting. I mean, there's I mean, so insulting. comments yeah. about Taylor. I mean, I feel sometimes like I'm watching Trump North, honestly, with well, this Ford government. And, and I mean, sometimes, and I, I do think people have said this to me, and I, I do think it's true. I think sometimes uh, Doug Ford does this to distract us. You know, he throws out pretty outrageous comments because uh, he doesn't want us talking about the things that are uh, really setting people back. And I talk about people feeling stuck. Uh, mm -hmm. People are struggling as well. But um, and, and, I, and I would like housing is a really important one, because as we know, there's there are many solutions. There are many things that have to come together to meet the housing needs of Ontarians. But it is a real crisis. Um, we need real rent control. Right. We need to actually build homes that people can afford. And we cannot rely only on the private sector to do that. It's not working. P homes are not being built. And so he wants to distract people from these things, from the fact that they don't have a family doctor, that, that, that if their kid gets sick, there might not be an emergency room that's open. He wants to distract people from thinking that, you know, worrying about the fact that, uh, that there isn't enough affordable housing being built. He doesn't want people to pay attention to the fact that housing starts are down in Ontario and not up. Um, so I, I do think that is part of what he is doing. And that's part of his game uh, with putting out these outrageous comments, which I will say are are terrible. I mean, look, you know, uh, the premier has made some pretty uh, offensive comments in the last few weeks about people who are struggling with homelessness or addiction and mental health issues. And I, you know, for me, I think that as a, a leader, as a premier in a position of such privilege as that, uh, you should be not dividing people, you should be bringing them together. You shouldn't be punching down at the people who are struggling under the decisions of your government. You need to take some responsibility. And I, I do think that, um, uh, you know, for us in the opposition, obviously, it's, it's frustrating for people out there to see a majority government like this that can kind of do whatever they want. And a premier like that who has so much power, um, and so I think it's really important to go at this in two ways. And I've always said this uh, on the one hand, while we oppose, while we expose what he's doing and don't let him off the hook, don't let him distract us. But at the same time, we have to be putting forward solutions that are going to actually make a difference in people's lives. People need to know that uh, it can be different. It can be done differently, that we can actually address the shortage of family doctors. We can address uh, the affordability crisis, uh, particularly when it comes to housing. Um, these are things that have solutions. Don't let Doug Ford and those guys convince anyone that there, these aren't issues that can be solved. Uh, other countries, other provinces are doing a better job than we are. We need to step up, and but he is not the guy to do it. Well, he is one of the least uh, popular premiers across the country, by, and it keep, seems to keep getting yeah. worse for him. But yeah. the polling locally in Ontario still suggests that if there is an election tomorrow, he would have another majority. So, you know, we haven't even gotten to the fact that he is trying to control municipalities, that he is telling us now that we can't have bike lanes unless the province signs off on it, which is so, again, counterintuitive to any leader around the world in 2024. Uh, but there seems to be this need to control, this need to, you know, build up this giant cabinet, spend more money than has ever yes. been spent. And we're not seeing the return on our investment as Ontarians. Right. We are seeing these massive deals, breaking a booze contract for half a million billion dollars or whatever, unnecessary expenditures, unnecessary ventures. I'm a business person. I thought that conservatives on some level stood for return on investment. From this premier, it seems to me that the only people who are benefiting are a select few who are close yes. to the premier and yes. the people who are suffering are the tens of millions of other Ontarians. So when you say there are solutions and best practices around affordability and housing targets and deeply affordable housing, there are. I mean, we hear them ad nauseum. We see other municipalities and other provinces doing it. That's so right. my question to you, Merritt, is given that we have a premier who has our scandal panel calls, you know, says acts like a king. And I think they've made good good case for that. 
how do you s- restrict him at least even to a minority so he doesn't have that kind of power? Because the numbers would suggest that if there was an election tomorrow, the Liberals would have the better shot at at becoming the official opposition. Um, but we we hardly have seen very much of Bonnie Crombie. My audience is saying, we like Merritt. Sounds like she's got some good ideas, good quality, good values. How do you stop the juggernaut that is the ever fundraising, ever vacationing PC party of Ontario? Are you going to join forces? What are you going to do? Well, first of all, let me say, uh, when it comes to polls, I think that my sense is people are not actually thinking a lot about an an election in Ontario right now. I mean, uh, it's not top of mind. Uh, people are just trying to get by. And so I'm always a little skeptical of polling just generally right at a point like this. And, and I think, uh, you know, others have said it many times before, but the only poll that matters is the one on election day. Um, I also think that um, when it comes to the liberals and uh, certainly, you know, they're, they're like, I don't spend a lot of time looking at this for this very reason, because I know that it's only a snapshot of a moment right now, but I don't think the liberals have really, um, I don't think the liberals really understand uh, why they were put in the penalty box back in 2018. And I think they don't understand that a lot of people are still not over what they did while they were in government. And, you know, uh, myself, for example, I ran for the first time uh, provincially because I didn't like where things were at in our public education system. I was a school board trustee and I was very, very unhappy with uh, what I was seeing in terms of the way that they were managing our, our schools. And, um, you know, let alone hallway healthcare, which started under the liberals, a lot of the P3 agreements that they they hatched in those schemes. But, you know, I say that because I think that um, uh, people are not ready to really uh, give them another chance yet. I think that a lot of people are uh, and that and the liberals, I think, know that I think they know that they are fighting to form basically an official party again, not to form government. And we're in a really different place. And it, it can be hard to see that sometimes. I appreciate it. But I think we have a very good and, and certainly the best shot at getting Ontario out from under Doug Ford. Uh, will it be easy? No. But it never has been. And I know, uh, first of all, that people need to get to know me better. And that's why we are putting some emphasis on, you know, giving people a chance to see who I am. But we are also building a campaign to defeat the government. And that means it's going to take a real movement on the ground, building that solidarity among Ontarians, which I think we can do. Um, I think we have the vision and the energy and the focus uh, to deliver the government that people in Ontario need. And I really do believe that when we are in a campaign, when the closer we get to it, people are going to be very clear. Things are more difficult today than they were uh, before Doug Ford was elected. Uh, They weren't so hot then but they've gotten worse. And now is the time for real change. And so when I talk about things, like I'm not afraid, I think this is the time to talk about bold ideas. Like that's why I, like by way of an example, you know, that's why I talk about going back to actually building housing again as a government, which we used to do, right? You know, you'll recall this at at provincial federal governments, funded housing in that way, uh, we built homes and we can do it again, building nonprofit, co-op, public, social housing, supportive housing. It's not going to be for everyone, but it's absolutely essential in to get to kickstart, frankly, the, the housing market to build again. And so um, I think those are really tangible and important ideas. And they're part of the solutions that we need if we're actually going to solve the problems for people. And of course, as you said, there's a lot of issues, right? We've got big issues. Um, But I guess my job is to remind people that it doesn't have to be like this, that government can do big, important things and can focus on your needs and not just the needs of that select few, as you said, Laura, right? And I think that's really important for people to hear that and to believe in it. And that's but it's going to be my job uh, over the next while to make sure that they they hear that and yeah they believe in it. 
So are there a couple of big areas you'll be focusing on? I mean, as I said, there's a massive list of policies and decisions and legislation that the Ford government has done that most people would consider them. I'm not NDP or liberal, but I do consider yeah. myself progressive. I'd like to progress as a society. A lot of progressives would look at and say that is regressive, that is dangerous, that is, you know, all, all the things I've said so far in the program. What are the things that you're going to be clearly creating a distinction between yourself and Ford with? So I think I, I mentioned housing and I think um, the struggle for the affordability crisis right now, a lot of it is, is, is around where we live and how we can, can afford a home at all. Yeah. So the way I look at it is a couple things. I, I think we need to focus and we will be focusing on helping people build a good life, you know, a home they can afford, mm -hmm. uh, a family doctor when they need one. Uh, a good public school for your kids. And then beyond that, a fair shot at not just getting by, but actually building savings for the future, being able to plan ahead again. So all of those things, those, those main elements, healthcare, housing, uh, the cost of living generally, um, and education. I mean, the, this is really, and if you think about it, right, this is what this is kind of the basics of what government should be doing. Um, it's, it's really getting back to that. And what we see with Doug Ford is not just a government that's, yes, as we've talked about it, wrapped up in their own schemes and their scandals and distracted by the premier's vanity projects, but also a government that's wasting taxpayer money and, and frankly, out of gas, right? They're out of ideas. They're out of touch. So, those are the key pillars that you'll hear us talking about with, with core ideas. Um, and, you know, we, we have been presenting those ideas in the legislature over the last few years, and we bring them forward in motions and bills, uh, but for sure. I mean, from, and again, this isn't just something I'm concocting out of nothing. This is because this is what people are telling me out there in communities all across the province. And, and I mean, you know, whether you're in Northwestern Ontario or in Eastern Ontario, if you're in a rural community or you're in a big city, everybody in Ontario is, is confronting these issues. And of course, you know, as you mentioned, um, we won't be ignoring, of course, those, those people who um, have been really saddled with um, difficult situations, uh, especially under this government. Um, you know, we know that we have to address the struggles that families of children with autism are facing. We know that people on ODSP, uh, that, you know, it's basically legislated poverty. You know, these are things that we have to address as well, but you, you can count on us focusing on those key pillars as well, uh, heading into the election. Okay, well, Merritt, I'm on your clock because you gave me a half hour this time. Yeah, unfortunately, I had to go. No, but I, I want to respect that. Do you have, I'd like to have you back when we can yeah, do of course. a bit more in that messaging. You've been waiting to get back in the legislature because Ford took like, what, a three month vacation? I don't even know now. Six months almost. Six months. Six months. Almost. So we're at six. You haven't been able to take it to them legislatively. Uh, now you can, but you're also starting this online advertising with the It's Merit. I think it's it's merit.ca. Is that the where people can go? I and believe so. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. So it's Merit, uh, a last word for our Osho audience, knowing that we can have you back and dig a little deeper next time. What do you want to leave us with? And and are you going to ever consider a coalition with the Liberals if it comes down to that? Or is that you off know, the table? I mean, I think, first of all, like we, we are going to run candidates in every riding. You know, we're not like the Liberals or the Conservatives. We don't appoint candidates. Our uh, ridings are holding nomination meetings now. There are some contests happening. It's kind of exciting. I think that's also really important. For democracy, but it's also important because we need to build that excitement in communities across the province. I, what I want to leave you with, and, and your your viewers and listeners with, is, you know, this is uh, this is going to be an exciting moment for the province of Ontario. I don't want people to think that what's happening right now or politics and government don't matter. The next election is going to really matter. And we have an opportunity to do something uh, pretty exciting in this province. Uh, we can look at what other provinces have managed to do under NDP governments. We can do that here, right? But we need to defeat these guys. And uh, we're gonna need to build that movement on the ground in communities all across this province. I'm excited about it. And I think um, I'm really hoping that people will join with us. Maybe people who have never voted uh, NDP before or helped out with campaigns. I think this is a real opportunity. So I'm, I'm reaching out to everyone to join us. 
Well, that could be why you don't mention NDP in your new ad campaigns, because <laughs> you're trying to build a bigger tent, possibly, for that movement. Uh, I hope you do it quickly, Merritt, because uh, we're, yeah. well, the clock looks like it's ticking down pretty quickly for the Ford government. So we'll see what happens. I really appreciate you coming on the O Show, giving us an update on where we are. And we'll be watching closely as you can get back to work in the legislative body where you're supposed to have been all these months had Ford not right. taken the extended vacation. And we'll watch what you do. Merritt Styles, it's Merritt is the new campaign. Campaign. And the focus, it sounds to me, is on building a movement uh, that is going to, uh, I think, hopefully bring hope to the province of Ontario, because that's certainly something that there doesn't seem to be a lot of amongst many of the people who watch and listen to the O Show. Thank you so much, Merritt Styles, for being on the program. You. All of you who subscribe on YouTube, and wherever you get your great podcasts, we'll be back with more. And thanks for all the questions you sent in for this interview. I tried to get in as many as I could. Take care. Thanks, Merritt. When you care about current affairs, it's on the O Show. And when you want to get clear what's going on here, it's on the old show. If you like to stay in the know, tune yourself in to the old show. It's the old show. Laura Babcock's the old show. With a lot of great guests, she puts them to the test on the old show. There's no doubt they'll be calling them out on the old show. Stand for something or fall for it all. Ontario, hear the call on the old show. Podcast, the O Show. Laura Babcock, the O Show. Stay informed with the O Show, O Show. <laughs> your merch, your merch <laughs>